Got a special little delivery this week. It's not necessarily gear related, but it's more of a sentimental purchase. It is a custom made clapperboard for the feature film that I'm currently working on. As I mentioned in a previous vlog, this is my second feature film working as a cinematographer. And whilst I try not to be too much of a sentimental person when it comes to possessions and buying things, when I shot my first feature film, I did buy a custom clapperboard for that, which had the production as well as the director and my name etched into the slate. And when we wrapped that production, I had all the cast and crew sign the back of it. And I coated it with a sealant spray on the front and back just to preserve all of the final slate information, the final scene, the final shot, the final take, as well as the signatures. This is a pretty indulgent purchase that I've paid with my own money. It's not being charged back to the production, but it's not every day that you get to shoot a feature film. This is only my second one and you never know, it could be my last or it might be a few years until the next one. So I sometimes think it's nice to cement these special occasions. And when we wrap this production, I'll do the same thing with this slate, have everyone sign it and seal the final slate information on the front and have it displayed on my desk with the slate for the first feature film. Also received these two D-tap splitters from AliExpress. Got a 30 centimeter and a 20 centimeter to help with powering accessories on the camera rig. And hopefully with these shorter cables will help keep cable management a little bit more tidy as well. Only one shoot this week, and it's a pickup shoot for the feature film that I just mentioned. The shoot we were doing was taking place in this Airbnb location where the room we were using was supposed to be a dorm within the school that's in the film. It was quite a tricky location to work in just because we were on the top floor and the ceilings were slanted and curved. So it meant that using something like an auto pole, which would be usually something that I would look to use in a space like this, just wasn't going to be possible. It wasn't like a normal space where you have normal height ceilings. So it became a bit of a challenge to light. And the space was also really small and was covered in white walls, which is exactly what you want as a cinematographer. Really small space with white walls so that light can bounce all over the place and make it really difficult to create contrast. It's just perfect. <laughs> this is one of the common issues you come across when working on low budget shorts and feature films. And ultimately it is my job to solve these problems to the best of my ability. Because the space was so tight, we weren't really able to hide any lights to the left or right of frame. We were pretty much seeing the entire space. So the only option we really had was to use the faithful falconized light again. We stuck it on a C stand with a boom arm and used it to try and replicate a top down ceiling light that we could have over our characters and get it as high as possible into the ceiling. And we were just shooting a couple of scenes in this room, but because it had quite a few actors involved, it was quite a tricky space to work in to get enough space in for wides for the, the actors as well as space for the camera and the boom for the sound. We tried to make use of practicals using a couple of lamps on the tables. And me and my gaffer tried to just amplify the light that those were giving off with the falcon eyes just to raise levels and create key lights on our actors. So yeah, it's definitely one of those shoots where it can feel quite difficult to create good looking images because of the limitations of the space we had available, the lack of set dressing, and obviously the white walls we were having to deal with, which can make creating contrast quite difficult. But as always, we try our best in these situations to create the best looking images possible that serve the story of the film. And all in all, I think it was a pretty successful shoot. Similar to the previous pickup shoot that we did for this film, we were working with a very minimal crew. On this occasion, it was just myself, my gaffer Adrian, Alex on sound, and Derry as director. And we had quite a limited amount of time in the space too, so we had to keep things simple from a lighting perspective. So it definitely created challenges for us, and it wasn't easy to create images that look as good as we would maybe hope. But I think all things considered, we managed to pull this off really well, and the images we were able to create did look good and serve the story really well. So all in all, it was another successful shoot for the feature film. Color grading isn't something I get to do very often, but this week I had the privilege of going into a client's office and color grade the short film that I showed in the previous vlog. I was really grateful that the client allowed me to do this because I'm not sure what it's like for other people, but so often I tend to shoot a project, hand over the footage, and then I don't get to have much of a say or contribution to the post-production stage. And so often when you see the results, you can sometimes feel a little disappointed in how it's been treated from a color perspective, usually because there isn't budget to hire a professional colorist. So quite often editors will resort to applying a LUT to the footage, which in most cases is fine, especially when it comes to corporate work. There's usually a fast turnaround 
So even editors who I know are competent colorists don't really have time to apply a proper color grade to those projects. But when it comes to short or feature length films, the images we create need to have a lot more care put into the color grading stage. And so it was great being able to go into the office and give this project that final bit of polish that it needed. Because I thought from the other parts of post-production, the editing and the sound design, they had done a fantastic job on it. And you can tell a lot of passion had been put into those. So it would have been a shame if the color grade stage had to just be a lot being applied to the whole film. And whilst I wouldn't call myself a professional colorist, I think like a lot of cinematographers, I have spent quite a bit of time color grading and experimenting in DaVinci Resolve with my own footage. So I like to think I have a pretty good taste when it comes to that side of things. And I'm sure there's plenty of things that I'm technically doing wrong, that I'm sure if a professional colorist saw my timeline and saw my note trees, they would probably grit their teeth a little bit at it. But ultimately, as long as you're able to get the look that you want and the client is happy with it, that's all that really matters. So it felt great being able to take the reins of this stage of post-production and help just finish off this fun little project that we got to do. If you want to check out this project, you can check out the previous vlog where we shot the behind the scenes, where there is also a link in the description to the final finished film.